Mexico, one plate at a time, is made possible by these funders. Bohemia, 100 years of Mexican craftsmanship. Bohemia, Mexican imported beer. Your chipotle shrimp, fruit tart, stir fry, marinara, enchilada, lobster minestrone, weekend roast, french toast maker has arrived. Five Star, unleash your genius. Right now, I'm in one of the best food cities in the world. And believe it or not, it's Tijuana. Think about it. There's a long, important heritage of great food here. A world-class wine region, great cheeses, one of Mexico's most vibrant taco cultures. This is the birthplace of the margarita. And recently, Tijuana has become the home of a world-class culinary school and some of North America's top chefs. One of those chefs is Javier Placencia. With his family, he owns a number of restaurants in Tijuana. But Misión 19, Mission 19, housed in a very modern LEED certified building, is the showcase for his vision of modern day Tijuana cuisine. I joined some local friends at Javier's place for some pretty spectacular food and some lively conversation about Tijuana, its exciting food culture and its promising future. Our first course was a remarkable salad of baby head lettuce with a creamy dressing of aged cotija cheese from the state of Michoacan. It was topped with some pickled chilies, bacon, some microgreens, and a drizzle of two full-flavored varieties of local olive oil. Our first beverage was a large format craft beer made by a local winemaker and served in champagne glasses. Salud! Salud! Bienvenido. Oh, muchas gracias. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Provecho. Provecho. Did you all eat just like this growing up? Yes. Having beautiful food like Javier makes? <laughs> <laughs> For me, where did, you, where did you grow up? I grew up here in Tijuana. I'm from Tijuana, but my parents are from different parts of central parts of Mexico. Uh -huh. My mom is from Guadalajara, and my dad is from Michoacán. Uh -huh. So growing up in my house was uh, menudo, pozole, sopes, lots of very traditional Mexican food. Right. Delicious also. Mm. Most of the people in Tijuana, we have like the same story. We come uh -huh. like from central of Mexico, and we bring our dishes, like Aldo is saying, for yeah. us is pozole, menudo. Right. There is the Mexico. classics. You get a sense of that in these kind of dishes when they're mixing products from this region, but with the chile and with the salsas from central parts of Mexico. But we're just a few miles from San Diego as well. <laughs> and there's a lot of San Diego on this plate yeah, yeah, as yeah, well. So yeah. there's an influence from that side. This is very interesting because it's a little the, the heart of an iceberg lettuce, mm -hmm. a sauce that if Liz, if I was across the border, uh -huh. you know, what I would say is that this is some kind of ranch dressing, but it doesn't taste like ranch dressing. <laughs> yeah, no. It tastes it looks like, like Yeah, I mean, it it's, like it's, it's cotija <laughs> cheese, mm -hmm. and it's got this savory, wonderful thing with the chilies and the black pepper and the little tomatoes that have been slightly dried mm -hmm. and bacon. It's, there's a lot of really cool things going on on this plate. Javier, what brought you to Tijuana? Well, Why did you uh, want to come here? You know, basically, uh, I suddenly uh, realized that there were no any culinary school in Tijuana. Uh -huh. At that time in Santiago, I was working in a school, a culinary school there. So I decided to come here. So you, you came here. You came here for the food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Directly. I go. I go but, most uh -huh. places for the food. Picture this. It's the 1920s, during Prohibition in the United States and the early days of Hollywood. 
The glamour set came across the border to Tijuana's huge casino resorts. This was Vegas before there was a Las Vegas. Around this boom time, the Italian-born Cesar Cardini opened up his grand restaurant here in Tijuana. And in 1927, they say he created his first Caesar salad. Yes, the Caesar salad was born right here in Mexico. Caesar's restaurant has seen a lot of ups and downs since then, but it's recently been given new life by Javier Placencia's family. And in my opinion, they've returned it to its original grandeur. And they still make that traditional Caesar salad today. La ensalada Caesar, por favor. Claro que sí, señor. That original Caesar's recipe starts with some chopped garlic, a little anchovy, freshly squeezed lime juice, a bit of mustard, black pepper, Worcestershire sauce. Then that's all blended well with the yolk of an egg and some of the region's famous olive oil. Finally, the leaves of the romaine heart are turned in the dressing and then topped with some Parmesan cheese and a crouton or two. Muchas gracias, señor. Gracias. Mm. I'd say that's worth the effort. I mean, it's way more subtle, more complex. The dressing's a lot lighter than almost any Caesar salad that I've ever had in my life. This is really delicious. But Tijuana isn't just about the old classics like Caesar's. The Tijuana Culinary Arts School is a stunning example of Tijuana's new food scene. The students here are being taught to respect the classics and to push the boundaries of what Mexican food has been. They do their internships in the best restaurants all over the world, and then they return home to add their special vision to the local restaurant culture. Some of the students gave me a glimpse and a taste of their modern reinterpretations of that classic Caesar salad. It's a Caesar salad shot. I kind of like that. A Caesar salad martini. Okay, I went from a shot, now I'm getting bigger. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger over here, okay? And I really like that a lot. I think, congratulations, that's a very nice job. Thank you. Thank you all very much for everything. This is just wonderful. There's a lot of very good ideas here on, on the table, but always respect the tradition that it comes from. If you don't know how to make it perfectly in the old-fashioned way, you'll never make a great modern interpretation of it. So keep, keep thinking about that with everything that you do. You guys are doing great work. You have a wonderful facility. I'm sure I'm going to see all of you in the next few years in great restaurants. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Our next course at Mission. with layer after layer of wonderful flavors. A creamy guacamole, sea beans, Mexican crema, some powder.
at, in U.S. food, it's a little bit of everything kind of all reinterpreted, reimagined, and out comes beautiful stuff like this. When I leave Baja, the thing I miss the most is the amazing seafood. I mean, there's just such abundance, such variety. You simply never talk to a chef here who doesn't cite local seafood as his or her primary inspiration in the kitchen. Our main course from Chef Javier was braised short ribs that were wrapped and roasted in fig leaves and then served with a Oaxacan black mole, certainly unique for Baja. like painting on canvas, no? Yeah, yeah. Tell us what we have in front of us. Well, this is a dish, I thought about it when we were uh, eating uh, street tacos, actually, and I love the smell of the, all the food that's being grilled in the streets. And my neighbor actually got this uh, huge uh, fig, fig tree, um, and I really love the smell of the figs when you bake them and when you uh, cook with them. So I, what we did is we took some ch uh, braised short rib that we braised for eight hours and then wrap it around this fig leaf, bake it again, and we finish it off with a black mole sauce uh, from Oaxaca. So all together, it, it's, it's wonderful, it's very tasty, and the smell The can smell be is amazing. Thank you very, very much. Enjoy. Okay. Salud. Thank you. Salud. 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 Have, have you had this wine before? No. no, no Pedro no, Domecq, 1948. And let's see, the grapes are Nebbiolo, Syrah, and Cabernet. This has got to be one of the best wines that I've had in ages. Yeah. Man, it is, I think it's going to go really beautifully with this because we have bold flavors. We have the braised short rib and we've got black mole on here. And I just think this is going to be an amazing match. I'm really excited to let's, try that. Let's, let's find out. And then, <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time I think about fig leaf as something that you use a wrapper but you don't eat it. Here it's all cooked and it's it's part of the dish. So, you know, I, uh, when I was growing up, I had so many memories that came from my family. And wherever you grow up, I think that's sort of the case for all of us. Food memories, things that you ate at special occasions. I'd love to hear, since this is such a diverse area, I'd love, tell me, what, what, are you, what are your memories from growing up? My best or favorite memory would be Christmas. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, Christmas. sort of like my tradition is Oaxacan mole at Christmas time now, and yours was what? Cooking with my mom and gra my grandma, and then my aunts came, uh -huh. and all the cousins. And it was like the Mexican tradition with the grandmother is the one that is really the boss. Yes. <laughs> so as soon as you get home, he was like, okay, go to the kitchen, and you're doing this or you're shopping this or you needed to do something around the dinner for that particular day. Mm -hmm. Years ago it was mandatory to help and now we volunteer to help. Mm -hmm. It's like if we don't help it doesn't taste like Christmas. Yes. I don't know if it makes sense. It, no it, it, absolutely it, it does. So it's, it's more true. like uh, that memory. Yeah. The food. Are we talking about this wine enough? It's, <laughs> it's, it's this, delicious. It, this it's, wine is it's, off the charts. Definitely yeah. off the charts. I, I still can't find the words to describe it. Just, It's hard to pair a wine with, with these rich flavors, exactly. the black mole and all of that. Mm -hmm. But this does it. The richness of the Syrah, the structure of the Cabernet, the brightness of the Nebbiolo. The food at Mission 19 is anything but street food. But street food is exactly what Chef Javier said was his inspiration for this dish. Well, street food, as in carne asada tacos, the most beloved tacos in all of Tijuana.
the cheeses around here are so beautiful and so different than any place else in, in Mexico. What do you have? And this is uh, fresh cheese with fresh basil and rosemary. And this is aged for eight months. And then we have this similar to Port Salud, but this one's made in Tecate. Port Salud? Yeah, Port Salud, Mexican <laughs> Port Salud. This one is a white cheddar from Guadalajara. And this is a aged cheese that's been aged for about 10 months. So they're all pretty distinctive and they go very well with these condiments that we make in the house. And this is a guava paste with olive oil. Then we have the hibiscus flour, which is uh, Jamaica, we call it in Mexico. And this is uh, walnuts, pistachios, and fresh rosemary, and uh, honey that we get also from, the, from San Quintin Valley. That looks beautiful. I want to try them all. <laughs> <laughs> I, you guys get to eat this cheese all the time, but I'm very excited about this because I've kind of fallen in love with these cheeses. Please help yourself so that I can have some too. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to sip a little oh bit of the port God. meantime. I think that most people outside of Mexico, or maybe even inside Mexico, would have the meal that we just had and say, is that Mexican food? But I think you guys would say it is Mexican food, but a different kind of Mexican food. I mean, clearly it's a, a unique vision. This is, as it says on the door, Cocina del Autor. This is one chef's brilliant vision of what Mexican food can be. What do you all think it can be? Where is it going? What is Mexican food going to look like in 20 years, 30 years? I think that maybe in the next uh, few years, let's say five or six years maybe, I think that Baja cuisine from Mexico is going to be on the top of it. Uh, I think that the world, you know, is always consumption, uh, different styles of food. And uh, I think Baja, it's, uh, it's going to be a trendy. It's with wonderful uh, products. You know, from the that's sea. What, that's what we have to talk about is the, the produce is here. And I say that no great cuisine can come from some place that doesn't have great natural resources. Yeah. And you have those resources yeah. here. I mean, we just ate so many different things. We've got the wine, the olive oil, the seafood for yeah. sure, produce around here, meat. We haven't talked a lot about the meat here, mm -hmm. but that's uh, it, there's a lot of. Good I think things. that one advantage that it could, you probably wouldn't consider it an advantage that we have here, is that there's there's not really that traditional food from Baja, mm -hmm. so these chefs, they don't have the stigmas that I have to produce this uh, guacamole or this mole. Poblano has to taste like this because it's a tradition here in Baja. We kind of creating our own personality. We get the influence from the South and from the tradition, but at the same time, we can allow ourselves to create something different or change in bold a little bit. It's really amazing what is poised to happen here. It seems to me all over Mexico people are recognizing it, but now people outside of Mexico are recognizing it as well. And there's so many reasons to come here to enjoy it, to experience everything from the street tacos to Alta Cocina Mexicana. <laughs> it's really beautiful stuff. We may see the future of Mexican food being what was on our plates today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really remarkable things, including these cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> I find kitchen inspiration everywhere in Baja, not just in the restaurants, but also in the markets. This is Mercado Hidalgo in Tijuana, and it has to be one of the best markets in the whole country. Because people have moved to Tijuana from all over Mexico, the variety and quality of products on display here is just astonishing, and that includes the cheeses that they sell here. There's a stall that has one of the best selections of fresh and aged cheeses that I've ever seen in Mexico. 
To finish off this impressive tour de force, we were served a pretty dramatic dessert of ring-shaped mini churros with creamy chocolate and a frozen chamomile glaze that was done on a piece of equipment that's called an anti-griddle. Clearly a very modern take on traditional churros. It was paired with a sweet muscat dessert wine. I don't know how we're supposed to eat this, do you? <laughs> I'm gonna try one of the little donuts first. You like the, you like the wine, this muscat? Yes, you know, it's very nice. It, it's a muscat, uh, 2000. Nowadays, I can tell you that there's around 60, 60 wineries in, in, in Baja, which is very interesting. And they are going, you know, like a Porto, with the, the last one we was Porto from Hans back of Monte Chanique to Muscat, Grappa. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, they are trying to uh, do a different kind of wines. Uh, with a very successful uh, results. You know, if you say Tijuana in the United States, people have this sort of stereotypical image of what they're going to get. I haven't found it here. <laughs> it's amazing because that seems to be a leftover from a long time ago. I mean, in its inception, Tijuana was the glamorous place to go back in the turn of the century and casino, tw casino time, 20s and all well, that. I see all these great restaurants and cultural activities. The museums are great here. The people, the life on the street is so vibrant. I, I feel like that there is something unique that is happening in this moment in Tijuana that's very exciting to me. Do you feel it? Now, people come here to do stuff here because all of this is happening. Arts, the culture, the food scene, the wine scene, not here in Tijuana, but very close. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things, like you said, going on here that people are, that it's attracting people not only from here, but from other parts of Mexico. Nowadays, no, there's a sense of, uh, of being from here. I'm from Tijuana, I love Tijuana. Nowadays, we all think and belong that this is our city and the city of our kids, of our family, and that's, that's very interesting. It's really beautiful. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you all so Salud. much. Salud. Thanks for sharing this gorgeous meal with me. Salud. Salud.